Welcome back to Casual Adult Coffee with Alicia and Corey. Today we're discussing dating with children. Not dating children, that's wrong. But dating your, meeting someone new who has children. Again, it's been a while for me, but when I met my cameraman, <laughs> his first words to me were, I have three daughters. <laughs> and it obviously succeeded. So I have to say kudos for the originality of this pickup line. I may use it in the future, but it did take me five years to uh, actually go out with them though. After that, five years. Yeah. You know what? I'm not even gonna count ten. <laughs> so he did actually sleep through our first date and forget to pick me up. So that did kind of put things back a little bit. Hmm. <laughs> you know what? We're not here to insult your cameraman. I'm sure he's embarrassed about it as it is. <laughs> it that being out, said. Yeah. That being said, after a certain time frame in all our lives, assuming you don't meet one person and stay with them for the rest of their life, for the most part, you're going to meet someone who has children already or has to meet your existing children. Very true. And that's where we're at. We, You and I were discussing before we started shooting, there's time frames to go with it. If you're 18 to, tw 18 to 29, Meeting someone who doesn't have kids is almost expected. It's, let's go with the abnormal to meet someone who doesn't have child or does have child. In your 20s, yeah, you're like, okay, well, let's start a family together. That's the societal norm. That being said, from 30 to 39, if you were to meet someone in a singles bar, what have you, and she says, I have kids, you say, great, me too. <laughs> but... And that's, again, a societal expectation of our age range. Yes, I agree. And then, like we were saying, if you get up to 40 and you meet a woman or man and they don't have children, by that time frame, you're a little hesitant. You're like, why not? What Are you unable? Are you anti-children? Crazy cat lady. <laughs> or in your case, crazy cat guy. I do love my cat. <laughs> that being said... I at least have one offspring, so I can I can skirt around it. But there are a few after 50, I don't think it matters one way or the other. Nobody really cares. It seems by the time you're 50... Your offspring are usually grown by that And point. gone. So, I mean, it wouldn't have come up in the conversation at all. Unless you're dating a 20-year-old and you're 50. Kudos to you. And then, <laughs> but for the most part, by the time you're there your child rearing days are gone and it's less of an actual concern true mm -hmm. but there are of course little hiccups and oddball concerns that come with dating someone with kids and that's when you introduce the kids do you introduce the kids how do you date when you have the kids like babysitters are ridiculously expensive yeah and that's babysitters i mean they charge what 20 bucks an hour that's a going rate i've heard i yeah i we don't ever go out anymore because babysitters are too expensive well that's it you can't mortgage the house to go for a movie yeah but we swap services or rely on cameraman's oldest daughter and that's, <laughs> she's amazing by the way absolutely it goes into the like obviously mixing <laughs> mixing two families is where you're in your 30s mixing and 40s whatever your dating range is of course the a logistical hiccup if you have uh parent teachers on thursday and i have uh, a bake sale on tuesday and we both got an hour free on wednesday we can assuming that the couple is growing to benefit each other and actually enjoys their company you will make sacrifices you make time. You stay up late. You talk on the phone. You text. There's you ways grab a around. quick coffee. Right. There's ways around that. The logistics, everybody knows how to solve that problem. Then, as we were saying, then blending two families, you've got different parenting styles. My, uh, one of my exes, she was, I thought, very lenient and... It almost felt like the kid could have actually slaughtered a lamb in the living room. <laughs> and the mom would just say, I'll clean that up. 
whereas there's been other other that the extreme of that is that the kid like sneezes when mm-hmm. watching television and it almost feels like he's uh put Jesus on the cross himself but you're like you know what there's got to be a fine medium and everybody knows your kids are the biggest part of your life oh yeah if heaven forbid something were to happen to our film crew and you moved on and started dating again I would know that your children are the primary concern to your life. A hundred percent. Everything I do revolves around my family. And to a degree, that's perfectly normal and acceptable. However, and this is the part that I find a lot of women don't really, I don't want to say understand, but don't really grip that if let's say again let's say that we meet five years later after you're magically single again and we start dating and you repeatedly tell me my children will come before you anytime that all you've in the sense of a relationship all you've done is diminish my importance to you period and that's i think it is a dangerous well, not dangerous, but it's a delicate balance or curve that you have to tell. If if all they were was a roommate, that's a perfect setup. Yeah. But assuming that we wanted to, because I have, like I said, I've dated a few, and there was one woman who clearly put me to the back of the kids. And I was like, you know what, I get that. In the first, like, say, six months, I don't expect me to be new dad. But, at the same time, there's got to be a respectful line drawn that says the relationship here, like a partnership with the parents actually creates a better respectful child. Oh, 100% agree with you. Um, Because eventually the children are going to move out and move on, and they're going to have their own life. Now, if you don't have a relationship already built with your partner whether it be their biological or step, mm-hmm. then you're left with an empty nest. Well, and, and you're that, by yourself. And not even counting for that, it's something that it shows the kids that ultimately how your relationship works and functions is the most important thing. If the child knows that they are the absolute most important thing in the world, it means they won't ever respect that new parent as well that's very true it's the and then this is the long-term benefit of it is that if if the child knows that a relationship is solid they know when they're an adult that that is what they're actually in a relationship for is to be part of a couple some people don't need to be part of a couple and we're not discussing that yes but at the same time i mean if you it's also a sense of security for them. Mm-hmm. That if they see that their parents are in a secure, loving relationship, then they have a secure, loving sense of home. If the parents are divided on everything, whether it be, again, step-parents or biological parents, then they don't have that sense of security when they walk in the door. Well, so I'm... creating that um, tight-knit bond between the parents... Well, and that's the strongest part. Like, I see, like I said, I'm dating, I'm online. I've seen women's profiles that say, my children always come first. And it's, in some ways, it's an admirable quality. It is. You should obviously place the importance of your children. That being said, if I know that I am secondary, and that's, I don't expect to be, stepdad on day two but the hiccup is is that if i am always mom's friend 10 years down the road that then i barely respect myself because i know that my opinion doesn't mean anything i think it depends on how the kids always come first there's different ways that that can be said 
my kids always come first. I will always buy them new clothes before I buy myself new clothes. I will always make sure that they have something to eat before I eat. 100%. I will starve before my children will ever starve. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to my relationship with my husband, I will, I will prioritize my relationship with him in order to make sure that my children have a safe, secure foundation in the home. So there's different ways that that can be interpreted, that my, my relation, I will make sure that my children get to school and I would like things like that. Yes, my children will always come first in that way. But my relationship with my husband always comes first so that my children have a secure foundation of a home. Oh, 100%. so I guess there's different ways to interpret my children come first. And that, you know what, that's a blanket explanation that's very nice and profound but that's the worst part is that I've had women say my children come before you and, and I've it, seen that in marriages too and it is I mean not going into the psychological flaw to that uh, setup is that it's <clears throat> all it does is it actually creates a wedge between the partners mm -hmm. because the man is never going to feel like his that he matters and I get the fact that a woman is of course the mother is the most important person in a child's life that said if the child and like you're saying I've seen I understand the importance of children being important in a relationship but I've seen it to the point where marriages have failed because the woman has put so much focus onto her children that she's completely neglected her marriage. And the husband has left because there's nothing left and he's basically just a roommate and they have hallway sex as they walk past each other going, hey, fuck you, fuck you. And, and there's and nothing I, left for them. And I, I think it's implied that the children are an important step to the relationship, step or completion point, and I get that. But I think both sexes, I mean, I would, I, I was dating one person that actually said that they didn't like my daughter, and it was like a reflex on my part that it was strong enough that I was like, we can't be together. But, I mean, that's the thing that, and I think that is a justified point in that your children are important to you, but too many people, you have to recognize the fact that if you're not willing to make, if you're not willing to make the compromises with a new person or existing person, that if you're not willing to make those compromises, that relationship will fail as well because that person doesn't feel validated in your life yes that just because there's children there doesn't negate the relationship aspect mm -hmm. whether you're building a new relationship or an existing relationship relationships take work oh and 100%. you have to build them up garden them feed the box whatever analogy you mm -hmm. you know orally thing you want to call it you have to work on that relationship. And yes, the children need to, to come first. You know, you have to take them to skating practice, hockey practice, feed them, you know, and what have you. But you still have to nurture the relationship. Well, and that's, that's exactly it. It's, I think, nobody, assuming that statistics are fairly accurate, no no person is going to walk into a relationship and say, my kids don't matter, welcome aboard. <laughs> you know what? If they do... There's probably a flag there. I was going <laughs> to say, yeah, run the opposite direction. <laughs> even, even I would be like, hmm, that seemed abnormal. But <laughs> that's the thing, is that too many... I get the importance of the children, but... I mean, the logistics of meeting with kids and meeting a new person, everything like that, those are all, in a way, minor issues. You can, if you like somebody, you're going to make the time to adjust your schedule on these things. But it's, 
maybe part of our quick fix culture these days that people expect on day two, I'm not the boss of the new kids. I'm not on day three, I'm not their stepdad. It's, and I think that might be where people are misinterpreting the kids are number one. Like my daughter, very important to me. That being said, if I was say dating a new girl and my daughter did something for sake of argument, let's say she keyed the new girl's car, that I'm not going to instantly take my daughter's side and say, well, you shouldn't have parked there or something to that degree. <laughs> that, that that's, I think, what too many parents, of course, you have to be aware of what, and too many people, and I think it's, it might even be, if I were to hazard a guess, the fact that the children are there the absolute most loyal. So from their perspective, when everything else has fallen apart, my kids still love me. So that could be part of the... You want... Of course you want that love. Yes. It's... You know what? It'll be... It's going to be hard to wrap up this topic. There's too many families, too many people, thousands of relationships. Thousands of different dynamics. Right. It's communication and it's expectation. If, if you're willing to compromise and willing to talk it out, the kids themselves are not an issue. Well, they're kind of a blessing when you oh, really get down to it. For sure. A blended family is just more love. It's not like it's you have a limited amount of love for a family, and when you add more kids to it, that you're dividing it like a pie, and all of a sudden you get less. When it's as a, as somebody who married a man who had children, and then I had more children with him, I just got more. See, and you got to look at it in the positive. That's even more slave labor. <laughs> Those chores aren't going to do themselves. Look at all these new workers you've made. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't think of it I that way, but... haven't vacuumed in a long time. <laughs> my kids are still too young for that. And my stepdaughter, my kids absolutely adore when she comes over. I, she's an adult now and has her own fiancé. And she is... She's one of my kids. Yeah, I that's... absolutely adore that young woman. Perfect. No, she calls me mom now. It's mm -hmm. taken us a long time to get to, to that point, and but she is she's one of my kids. And that's probably a perfect ending to this episode. Yeah, I guess that's a great point to wrap it up on. So yeah, she's one of yours. Yep. So we will. I guess thanks for joining us on. Um, today's episode and we will uh see you the next time any show or topics feel free to give us a shout and don't forget to subscribe and share